Hi everyone, uh, this is going to be not a massively long video, uh, but it's anything garage, it's not Stevie GTR as such, so no milling machine and no lathe work, although uh, involved in what I'm going to be doing um, in the garage at some point there will be parts made, I'm sure there will, parts that are unavailable etc for this new TVR that I've got, new to me. Uh, so I've just done a bit of a rundown video of what my plans are, sort of long term, next year or two, of what I'm going to do with it. So without uh, further ado, we'll have a quick bash onto a little hit and miss engine which is coming along nicely and then we'll take off into the garage and have a look. Hi guys, so this little video that I'm going to do is um, not about that hit and miss engine it's about something completely different it's not about them but that's going to be a separate video fitting LED complete headlight units to the TVR. So this video is going to be uh, about my plans basically for the TVR. What do I think I'm going to do with it? I'll come back in a minute. Well hi everyone um, so I've got this TVR now um, if any of you which some of my viewers are, are personal friends and they know my past when it comes to cars and bikes uh, and that is that I can't leave anything alone and I never could uh, and at grand old age that I am now I still can't so uh, this business about just enjoy it and drive it well we had the original problem which was the engine that were going up and down revving doing its own thing I can't start it now to show you because I'm in the garage with the door closed and it's fairly late at night anyway however uh, that is cured and it's a bit strange that TVR specialists never did cure it um, and we're talking about a lot of money, thousands and thousands of pounds were spent on this car trying to sort out why it didn't tick over properly and that it uh, had the bouncy ref counter. Going right down to replacing the ref counter with a brand new one or a rebuilt one. This was sent away and I think it were, I might be wrong, but I think it was £380 for the new ref counter sorting out erratic tick over which it wasn't it was nothing to do with that um, now then apparently somebody says there's a little knob somewhere you turn oh, well ain't that one apparently there's a knob somewhere you turn and it dims and brightens up the there's little buttons and quirky things all over this car so uh, why am I making this video? Basically, um, I'm not happy with what I've got. I love the car. It looks gorgeous. It's classic, but it's timeless in its looks, which probably many YouTubers have already said. It, it drives okay. A bit agricultural, but yeah, it's okay. But what would I like to do? Now, I believe that this has got the full leather. This top of the door, which you can't see, but you, you can there, is actually like a dark brown leather, as is the top of the dash. Here is like a brown leather. Now, whether that is proper leather, I don't know, but I'd like to change it. The centre console, which again, you can't see very well, but they're a stunning looking thing. Uh, 
but again I'd like to change it or part of it not all of it and I'll tell you what we're with in a minute the sterling wheel that's uh, a matching the dash and the um, dock out tops is um, like a dark brown nearly black but it's dark brown so what am I harping on about I'd like it's got the living system all aluminium everything's aluminium dials controls blah 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 I'd like to do Alcantara so this is just the interior I'd like to do uh, pretty much maybe a two-tone I'm not sure yet Alcantara top of the door cards would be Alcantara now you can buy different qualities of Alcantara I've looked into this before for a BMW you can buy different qualities and obviously I'd, I'd like to go for a nice quality one not a, a cheap one that shows all the marks and I've all the, the dash top done as I say done as in probably me doing it the dashboard is walnut which is lovely but it's cracked all over the place and it's a mess and I don't really want to put walnut back in if I did I'd go for a walnut steering wheel as well but I'm more into sporty stuff racing so I'd like to do a really nice carbon fibre dash now I might end up making that myself I wouldn't make the carbon fibre but you can buy sheet carbon fibre from one millimetre, two millimetre onwards uh, I don't know whether this would be maybe one millimetre or two but you use a heat gun, remove all the walnut stick and it, it leaves a steel, uh, a steel backing um, which you then bond your new to and then drill through so possibly that would be carbon fibre Alcantara now, do I take all, <laughs> do I take these eleven levers off? There's one, two, three. There's the the gear knob. There's the handbrake. There's one, two, three, four, five items. Uh, there's also the dials, but probably not them. Do I strip them and anodise them? I've got all the gear to do anodising, and I've had a lot of success. Would I anodise these in car, in the colour, body colour, which would be a, a pale blue. And uh, now I've got all the different colours and I can mix them up and I can make the pale blue that will look pretty much like this. So do I make all these leaven levers pale blue or do I leave them in race aluminium? In some sort of ways I think maybe leave it alone because there's no nicer than shiny aluminium is there? It, there's just something about it that looks really really good so we might be just looking at Alcantara the roof is carbon fibre and that looks stunning apart from there's a big scratch at one corner which needs a bit of lacquer correction on so that's the interior which as I say I would I would like to uh, address what else so interior exterior engine bay so we'll have a look at what else we're thinking about doing okay I'll get out of the car and we'll have a look They need some serious silicon treatment. Just feels like rubber on rubber, but okay. Of course, hardest thing is getting out of the damn thing. Oh, that's something else. I need to sort. I need to sort these seats out. This seat is too low. Way too low. Above my head is five inch. I don't need that much and I'm struggling to look over a bonnet and I'm six foot tall. I've got average limbs, so my legs and my body is pretty much in scale. But uh, yeah, it, this seat sank in, it's 20 what, 22 year old. 
it, it, it needs looking at so this seat needs to come out and be looked at the, they are a nice leather seat and they're in good condition so it'd be silly to have these made in Alcantara it'd probably cost me a couple of grand to do that which would be silly and it'd be out of the question ok let's get out here we go right so what else the paintwork is in extremely good condition it, it feels rough so it wants a right good tea cut and a polish and a wax uh, and there is little marks here and there and there's some on the boot the door's been painted by a spray can but look of it around the mirror area and the mirror doesn't work properly that needs addressing uh, so that door needs sorting out and relacquering the boot lid is now I don't like naming and shaming but this car was repainted at a cost of £1,500 in 2020, I believe, I think. 1500 quid by a company called MG Body Works, MG Car Works, classic car people. The front ain't that bad, really. It needs a bit of correction, but that ain't bad, but the boot lid is disgusting. And where the number plate goes, there's spots all over it, silicon marks. Uh, I don't know what on earth they've done, but it's not a good job that they've done. £1,500, uh, badly spent. I've painted a lot of cars, and I've painted a lot of motorcycles and scooters in my time, and I pride myself on making a fantastic job and making them look like new again. Um, and I'm not saying that this ain't going to end up the same, I'm, I probably will do this myself. I've got all the expensive paint gear uh, and the avail availability of paint. Uh, there's some touch-up needed and I've now got some touch-up so the first job would be to do a little bit of paint correction and touch-up on it. That's So the, the body isn't in bad condition. The underneath of the car appears to be okay, but until I get my two-post car lift and get it up in the air and have a good look at it, I can't really conclude what is required. Now, some people have said that the outriggers, um, and I know they get bad, um, can look okay from the underneath, but on the top of the outriggers where the body is curled over it, you don't see it, they can be rotted all the way through. Uh, so I've got to do some really, really clever little camera work, I don't know, once I get it up in the air. I do believe it's in good condition and that it's not knackered, but I don't know that for sure. So that's something that possibly would need addressing, which would mean the body off and a big job, which should get videoed anyway. So that's the underneath, which is undetermined at the moment. Under the bonnet, I think that's the heart of it, isn't it? The engine. Everybody wants to see your engine. If you go to a car show and there's not many TVRs there, you're going to say, you know, people are going to ask you, can I see your engine? Or if you've got a bonnet up, they're going, whoa, look at that, look at that, look at that. But of course, if it's done a few, few miles, like this is done a fair few miles, and it's not, you know, up to like brand new spec, then the rocker covers look a bit rough and the plenum chamber, all cast aluminium items look a bit rough. So we know that if you got the 500 lump, it's done in a purple colour. Uh, and I don't want to try and make it look like a 500 because it's not, it's a 450. There were no particular colour for a 450 other than just silver. So what I thought was at some point we'll have the rocker covers off. This is just a plan. I'm not saying it's going to get done, but this is the plan. Rocker covers off, plenum chamber off, give them a good strip and a clean and a rub down and do them in crackle black. And then machine the tops off and the, the flutes so they're polished aluminium or ground aluminium and crackle black. I think that would look stunning under here. The exhausts are only mild steel and they come forward as you TVI guys all know and then come into a, another plenum that comes over the top which creates that amazing uh, TVR sound that no other 
Rover V8 engine has the Marcos, the Rovers, the Land Rovers, the Discoveries, Range Rover, none of them have this sound that the TVR has and I'm sure it's all to do with this how they've got this four to four into one to a single plenum it, it works I'd like to take them off and send them away and get them ceramic coated because one of the big problems with TVR now I'm going to get shouted down on TVR forum here because they say there isn't a problem with a TVR it's just you got to look after it and I do appreciate that that's correct in a lot of ways however in hot weather and I, I've experienced this from a friend with a, a Griffith 500 in France overheating nothing wrong with car it were overheating we got him to take his number plate off and stuff it on the dash overheating problem cured it, and it were hot I mean we're it was like 35 over there centigrade it were hot what's that going to do with me uh, possibly I've got a number plate that I had made some time ago that sticks on the bonnet it's printed but it means taking the TVR badge off and moving it and putting it where the TVR badge is that's not a no no it's a, a strong possibility that I'm going to do that and it gets rid of it from front and you've got a better airflow a lot better airflow then the other problem is where the heat comes from is all the exhausts underneath the bonnet um, and in a fiberglass encased body and it, there's not a lot of room with these and uh, the exhaust just gets so hot and the manifolds but if you have them ceramic coated they don't I'm not saying you can touch them which I'm sure you can but some of these guarantees you get are quite good they hold the temperature within the body of the tubing you have to send them away they blast coat, blast them first of all to get the rust off any rust and then they excuse me I believe they do some sort of aluminium coat on the pipework and then on top of that they do the ceramic coating and bake it on and it's something you have to slow cure you haven't got to go out and thrash the car when it's first been done you have to slow bake it on when it's done and it's successful under bonnet temperatures on this car should be far lower whether it's 22 year old has not been a problem I don't know although it has got a lot of receipts for overheating a record radiator head gaskets being replaced because they're blown due to overheating a complete engine rebuild at six years old complete everything I suspect this engine's not standard because it's got receipts for plus 50 oversized cylinder liner fitted to a number four cylinder when it were rebuilt so I believe this engine's been bought plus 50 to get you for it's like 4.6 and a half litres as opposed to 4.5 and a half it were a conversion that people did bought them out and I suspect this is being done it's had a race cam put in it a sport cam and it's also had all the timing gear uh, at the front has been vernier adjustable which is what you do on a race car so you can adjust your cam timing so I, I do suspect this car has had a lot more work on it than I know of. Also, it's had up, uh, two up, up, EPROM upgrades. Why? I don't know. All I can tell you is out on road, it goes like a bat out of hell. And now, uh, you people that know me will know that I had a, an F-Type Jaguar at 550 horsepower, which really did go like a bat out of hell previously at 650 horsepower Nissan Skyline GTR 33 hence my name uh, and that thing what a flying machine I've had lots of things that are quick but this I'd say is as good as any of them it really really does go it pulls like a flipping horse it really does however I can't say for sure that that is the state of the tune of the engine right now but what I would like to do is 
when I left that bonnet up, that it looks absolutely beautiful under there. There's so many aluminium things, the catch counter, water, storage unit, all aluminium, want well, polishing up to mirror finish. Those rocker covers, though the plenum chamber, they all want remachining, doing in crackle black, or maybe another colour you could suggest, I don't know. I even thought a body colour, but I thought, no, that would be too tacky. Probably crackle black. It's not nicer than crackle black, it looks good. Uh, and then polished aluminium flutes. So that might be the route we go down. So we've covered the interior, the roof and the back, the hood, is brand new. It was replaced very recently. So that is all new and it's carbon fibre, which they all are, I believe, but nice and strong. Uh, the paintwork isn't bad, but it wants correcting. There's a little chip in the windscreen, which I bought some repair kit for over there, which I'm gonna do the repair on that. It's not bad, it's not cracked. It's just a right little chip, but I can't live with that once doing OCD job, isn't it? Uh, headlights, we're going to do the LED conversion. Backlights will be all LED when we're finished. We're using the existing housings, but with LED bulbs. I've got the number plate light LED bulbs. The interior light LED bulb is on its way. I bought the wrong one. That's on its way. And when it's finished, I want it to look really, really nice. Then we've got four corners to look at, haven't we? Um, where are we going to go with that? The standard brakes on this car, your fronts are vented to 60mm, single-sided sliding caliper. The rear, a 260 solid disc, sliding side single pot caliper with the handbrake mechanism fastened to it. That's got to stay no matter what. But it'd be nice to put some nice, I don't know, Brembo brakes on, coloured, and some bigger discs. Now, if any of you know, um, there's a guy with CTS Engineering, Dave, Dave Stewart. I've mentioned him before, uh, and I contacted him because he knows a hell of a lot about TVRs and asked him what sort of brakes could I put on this without over braking it. Because another thing is, I've read somewhere, on, maybe on the forum, that if you over brake one of these, you're asking for trouble. Simply because it, it looks like a, a grand lump of a car, but it only weighs a ton, and it's got no ABS. So if you're going trundling along a road at a grand old speed of 70 plus or whatever, and you've put massive brakes on it, and you've got reason to slam on, the chances are you're gonna lock these brakes up and you're gonna skid. Now that's not a good idea, and with the original brakes, you probably wouldn't. You'd probably brake harder than what you could if you put big brakes on it. So, massive brakes, no, no. It's only got 16 inch wheels. Now, somebody said to me, the 16 inch rear, but the 15 inch front. Now, this car isn't. Now it's a Mark III 2001, they possibly changed it on this year, or somebody else has, because it's got 16s on the back with 245 tyres on, and it's got 16s on the front with 225 tyres on. The car looks right, the stance looks right and everything. I suspect that that's what they did on last ones on Mark III's, but I could be wrong. I stand corrected and you can let me know, or any of you that are TVR guys could let me know, because I do know the Mark 1s and possibly the Mark 2s had 16s rear, 15s front, which very limited you to what you could put in in the way of braking. However, this is 16. So, Dave Stewart said that you can fit, as 260 standard, 283 mil with a Brembo kit, which is Cosworth 888 eight, eight, or 887 discs and calipers from a Cosworth or you can go to the BMW 7 series some of the higher spec ones had Brembo 4 pots on the front I don't know about the back but on the front they had Brembo 4 pots and I thought yeah they, they would look lovely they're not silly money second hand new they're ridiculous so 
Once we get it up in air and have a play underneath, we might think about possibly upgrading the brakes a bit. But not too much and not too silly. So we've got an interior. I mean, even driver's seat doesn't look straight. It looks to be over a little mini. That one does as well. Maybe, maybe it's right, I don't know. But they've got to come out and be repadded or whatever. Interior, exterior, underneath, engine bay, four corners. So there are all things got to address. Probably going to take a couple of years. But you guys will see it because I will be putting YouTube videos out of it all. And I'll post most of them, which I think the guys like it, on the TBR forum. Uh, posted a couple of posts on there already and, you know, they're saying, you know, put some more content on, it's great. It's a very quiet site. Um, I'm a member at Jaguar site, which I won't be visiting probably much anymore. And that will flat out, every night there'll be people posting. Same with Ducati forum, BMW motorbike forum. There's tons of people every day putting lots and lots of content in there. The TVR forum is an extremely quiet one. Now, it, I believe there's something like 5,000 members, but it could be because a lot of those members are like myself, elderly, uh, probably not a lot of young lads doing it, um, that be not members, that is. Uh, well, I'm sure there's some, uh, but a lot of them are probably got a car cover over them and garage and so on and not being used. So of the maybe 5,000 forum members, a lot of them will have a TVR, maybe doesn't use them. So you don't get a lot of activity on there. So never mind, it doesn't matter. Yeah, just looking at that mirror, they've painted that mirror and it's pale. It's nowhere near as dark as the car body. So ah, that's another thing. So. Mirrors. I've, I've read that people put Audi TT mirrors on. The various other mirrors. They really do need changing. They're Citroen BX, I know they are. We need to look at that. I mean, the electrics are no problem because I'm into electrics, I always have been, so I can rewire them. I mean, I could even put fold in ones on uh, that would fold in and put a switch somewhere whether I'd ever need to do that I don't know that's another thing to look at and it's another day guys thank you for watching hope you enjoyed this little video don't forget to give me a thumbs up and a subscribe and share or whatever but the thumbs up and a comment you know Steve you're an idiot leave it alone but I don't wanna I wanna make it nice and it's not one of the later TVRs, uh, as you know from the previous videos, this cost me a grand total of £9,540. I paid £140 cash to the guy that delivered it for me, um, who didn't deliver it very well actually. It's scraped underneath back of them exhaust tailpipes, which I'm not happy about. Exhaust system, do we leave that alone? It's not that loud, it sounds gorgeous, but it's not that loud. Maybe one day. If you got a coast, would you want it making a lot of noise? <laughs> I don't know. See you later, guys. Okay, back. So, yeah, um, that's what my plans are. Whether they all come off or not, I don't know. But, <clears throat> as I said in previously, anybody that knows me knows that I can't ever, ever, ever leave anything alone. And you know, just about every car I've ever owned, apart from the Jag, that was so new and so expensive, I, I didn't touch it and never needed to touch it and do anything. You couldn't start thinking I'll put a better brakes on it because they were marvellous already, and I'll put bigger wheels on it or I'll do this or an engine tune. You could have done an engine tune if you'd have wanted to. Um, but this car, it's an old banger, I suppose, in retrospect. So it's ripe for some modifications, upgrades, make it look nicer to me. Some people may like the old worn up dashboard, which is lovely and stunning. And I've had cars in the past that have had them, but I don't know, we're looking at something different. 
So I hope you like the video and as I said give us a thumbs up it really helps my channel grow. Um, I don't earn a fortune or anything off YouTube it's not about that. I don't have enough subscribers to earn a great deal of money um, you know it, it's not about that it's about content and people who like to watch it and enjoy it and the people that do watch it usually comment and it's lovely to know that they've enjoyed what I've put. So for you guys that are into engineering and making stuff on the lathe and miller machine and are not pretty sort of car orientated or automotively and you might be into steam or whatever you might not really like this video because it, it's not about engineering sort of I suppose everything is in a way but uh, I hope you enjoy it anyway well, comment and let me know